Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to discuss CCNA version 7 packet tracer activity. Configure a third channel. Before coming to this activity, friends, if you like to get any CCNA project support or CCNA online classes, you can contact our team using our website. Link you will get from the description below. And also, if you like to get this type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to enable that bell icon near to the subscribe button so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. Now back to our packetizer activity. Here we can see the objectives. In part 1, configure basic switch settings. In part 2, configure an ether channel with Cisco PAGP. Then in part 3, configure an 802.3 AD LACP ether channel. And in part 4, Configure a redundant ether channel link. Also, we will go through this background. Three switches have just been installed. There are redundant uplinks between the switches. As configured, only one of these links can be used, otherwise, a bridging loop might occur. However, using only one link utilizes only half of the available bandwidth. Ether channel allows up to eight redundant links to be bundled together into one logical link. In this lab, we will configure port aggregation protocol that is PAGP, a Cisco Ether channel protocol and a link aggregation control protocol that is LACP, an IEEE 802.380 open standard version of a third channel. Before beginning the configuration, review the Ether channel configuration guidelines and restrictions listed at the end of this activity. Coming to the end of this activity, here we can see a third channel configuration guidelines and restrictions. A third channel has some specific guidelines that must be followed in order to avoid configuration problems. So here we can see those guidelines and restrictions. All Ethernet interfaces support a third channel up to a maximum of eight interfaces with no requirement that the interfaces be on the same interface module. Second one is all interfaces within an ether channel must operate at the same speed and duplex. Then the third one is ether channel links can function as either single VLAN access ports or as a trunk links between switches. Fourth one all interfaces in a layer 2 ether channel must be members of the same VLAN or be configured as a trunks. Fifth one if configured as a trunk links Layer 2 Ether channel must have the same native VLAN and have the same VLANs allowed on both switches connected to the trunk. Coming to the sixth one, when configuring Ether channel links, all interfaces should be shut on prior to beginning the Ether channel configuration. When configuration is complete, the links can be uh, re enabled. Seventh one, after configuring the Ether channel, verify that all interfaces are in the up bar up stage now coming to the eighth point it is possible to configure an ether channel as static or for it to use either pagp or lacp to negotiate the ether channel connection the determination of how an ether channel is set up is the value of a channel group number mod command and here we can see valued values active LACP is enabled unconditionally. Next is a passive. LACP is enabled only if another LACP capable device is connected. Then a desirable. PAGP is enabled unconditionally. Auto. PAGP is enabled only if another PAGP capable device is connected. On. A third channel is enabled but without either LACP or PAGP. Now coming to the ninth point, LAN ports can form an ether channel using PAGP if the modes are compatible. Compatible PAGP modes are a desirable, desirable, desirable auto. If both interfaces are in auto mode, an ether channel cannot form. Coming to the tenth point, LAN ports can form an ether channel using LACP if the modes are compatible. Compatible LACP modes are active, 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 passive. 
if both interfaces are in passive mode and a third channel cannot form using LACP. Now coming to the last point. Channel group numbers are local to the individual switch. Although this activity uses the same channel group number on either end of the other channel connection. It is not a requirement. Channel group 1 that is interface for channel 1 on one switch can form an ether channel with channel group 5. This interface for channel 5 on another switch. So these are the uh, ether channel configuration guidelines and restrictions. Now here we can see port channel table and we have to create this as channel group 1, 2 and 3 and we can see the ports and its a protocol. Now we will go to the instructions. In part 1, configure basic switch settings. Assign each switch a host name according to the topology diagram. Okay, we will do that. First of all, we will go to S1, CLI. Enable, configure terminal. Then we will set the host name as S1. Now we will go to S2. Enable, configure a terminal. Host name as S2. And we will go to S3. CLI. Enable, configure a terminal. Host name as S3. Next is before beginning the link aggregation between switches, verify the existing configuration of the ports that connect the switches to ensure that the ports will successfully join the other channels. Commands that provide information about the state of the switch port include these are show commands, show interfaces, include Ethernet show interface status, show interfaces trunk. Okay, just we will give this a show command in S1. We will exit from this global configuration mode and here we will give show interfaces include Ethernet. And here we can see the details each port details also we will give show interface status here we can see a duplex and a speed Then we will use this uh, show interfaces uh, trunk command. And we can see uh, this uh, trunk is not configured. Okay, right. Configure all ports that are required for the third channels as static trunk ports. Also, they given a note here. Uh, if the ports are configured with the DTP dynamic auto mode, and you do not set the mode of the ports to trunk. Uh, the links do not form trunks and remain access ports. The default mode on a 2960 RAW switch is for a DTP to be enabled and set to dynamic auto. DTP can be disabled on interfaces with the switch port no negotiate command. Okay, now we will configure all the ports as uh, static uh, trunk uh, in these uh, switches. So first of all, we will go to S1, then CLI, and here we can see the ports we used in this uh, switch S1, G0 slash 1, G0 slash 2, also FA0 slash 21 and FA0 slash 22. So we will uh, go to these interfaces as a range, so we can give the command, we will go to conf T and we will give interface as a range, we have a FA0 uh, slash, it's uh, 21 and 22. So 21-22. Also we have a gigabit port G0 slash 1 and G0 slash 2. So G0 slash 1 and 2 dash 2 we can give. Okay. 
and here we are going to give switch port modus trunk now we will go to s2 before that we can see uh, the ports g0 slash 1 g0 slash 2 then fa0 slash 23 and fa0 slash 24 so we'll go to s2 cli we'll go to those interfaces as a range fa0 slash 23 24 so we can give dash 24 then we have a g0 slash 1 and 2 so here we can see that command okay then press enter and here we will give a switch port modus trunk switch port mod trunk now we will go to s3 before that here we can see the ports uh, we connected it's fa0 slash 21 fa0 slash 22 fa0 slash 23 fa0 slash 24 that means from fa0 slash 21 till 24 okay we will go to s3 we'll go to interface as a range fa 0 slash 21 till 24 correct we'll give a switch port modus trunk Even we can verify uh, these configurations we will verify in any one of the uh, switch using this uh, show interface uh, trunk command we will go to s1 end show interface uh, trunk and here we can see the details these are the ports fa0 slash 21 22 g0 slash 1 g0 slash 2 and we can see its status uh, trunking native vlan and here we can see vlans allowed and active in management domain now we will go to part 2 configure an a third channel with a cisco pagp again they given a note when configuring a third channels it is recommended to shut down the physical ports being grouped on both devices before configuring them into channel groups otherwise a third channel misconfig guard may place these ports into a disabled state the ports and port channels can be re-enabled after a third channel is configured now we will go to step one configure port channel one the first a third channel that is created for this activity aggregates ports fa0 slash 21 and fa0 slash 22 between S1 and S3. Configure the ports on both switches as a static trunk ports. Yes, so uh, here we can see uh, we are going to configure uh, these ports between S1 and S3. So here we can see that link port channel 1 PAGP. Here they mentioned to configure the ports on both switches as a static trunk ports. Uh, actually we done that uh, previously itself uh, we configured all the uh, ports i mean all these connected ports as a uh, uh, static trunk right next is use the show interfaces trunk command to ensure that you have an active trunk link for those two links and the native vlan on both the links is the same so we have to uh, give this command a show interfaces trunk we will go to s1 and we can verify that Oh, already we given that command here itself we can see fa0 slash 21 and 22 we can see its mode is on and encapsulation 802.1q status trunking yeah that's fine and we can see native vlan it's one coming to c on s1 and s3 add ports fa0 slash 21 and fa0 slash 22 to port channel 1 with the channel group 1 mode desirable command the mode desirable option enables the switch to actively negotiate to form a pagp link note interfaces must be shut down before adding them to the channel group now here we can see the commands we have to give in s1 and s3 
so we have to go to those interfaces as a range fa0 slash 21 and 22 then we must shut down then we have to configure channel group 1 and we have to give a mode as a desirable so that uh, we are configuring PAGP right the same way we have to do it in S3 uh, we have to go to those interfaces then shut down it then we have to uh, create this uh, channel group 1 with the mode desirable then we have to give a shutdown command so we will do that on both uh, switches first of all we will go to S1 and we will do that configuration configure terminal here we are going to the interface as a range uh, we will go to fa0 slash 21 and 22 right here we have to shut down first so shut down all these interfaces i mean 21 and 22 okay now we have to create this uh, channel group we will give uh, one then we have to set the mode as a desirable then press enter okay so here we can see creating a port channel interface port channel one okay press enter again now we will give a no shutdown command now we will do it in this uh, switch s3 enable configure terminal we will go to those uh, interfaces as a range fa0 slash uh, 21 and 22 okay so we have to shut down first then we will give channel group one more as a desirable just I will expand this window so that you can view the entire command channel group one mode desirable okay then we can see creating a port channel interface port channel one press enter again and we are going to give a no shutdown command the message creating a port channel interface port channel one should appear on both switches when the channel group is configured yes we have seen uh, on both switches uh, this interface designation will appear as po1 in command output okay so we can verify that po or even uh, we can give uh, the show command and we can verify it okay coming to d configure the logical interface to become a trunk by first entering the interface port channel then number command and then the switch port mode trunk command add this configuration to both switches that is s1 and s3 so here we can see we have to go to that interface that is port channel 1 and we have to give a switch port mode trunk the same way we have to do it in s3 also first of all we will do it in this switch s1 okay just we will exit from these interfaces then we will go to interface it's a port channel 1 okay and here we have to give switch port modus trunk the same way we will go to s3 we will exit from all these uh, interfaces then we can give a interface it's a port channel 1 and here we will give switch port mode as a trunk now we will go to step 2 verify port channel 1 status issue the show a third channel summary command on s1 and s3 to verify that a third channel is working on both switches this command displays the type of a third channel the ports utilized and the port state command output is shown for s1 okay so we have to give this command show a third channel summary so we'll go to s1 and we will issue that command and show a third channel summary 
okay there are some mistake we have to give a third channel together show a third channel summary here we can see the details and here we can see the ports we used fa0 slash 21 and 22 protocol we used pagp and we can see it's a group one also we will verify in s3 end and we will give the show command show a third channel summary and here we can see the details we can see the group port channel and here we can see uh, s and u u means uh, it's in use s means layer 2 okay then we can see the protocol we used and the ports If the Ether channel does not come up, shut down the physical interfaces on both ends of the Ether channel and then bring them back up again. The show interfaces trunk and the show spanning tree commands should show the port channel as one logical link. Okay, we will verify this show interface trunk on S1. Show interface trunk. And now we can see the port is support channel 1. Mode on encapsulation and status trunking and native VLAN. So it's working. Now coming to part 3. Configure an 802.3 AD LACP Ether channel. Step 1 Configure port channel 2. In uh, 2000, the IEEE released 802.3 AD which is an open standard version of a third channel. It is commonly referred to as LACP. Using the previous commands, configure the link between S1 and S2 using ports G0 slash 1 and G0 slash 2 as an LACP a third channel. You must use a different port channel number on S1 than 1 because you already used uh, that in the previous step. To configure port channel 2 as LACP, Use the interface configuration mode uh, channel group 2 mode active command. Active mode indicates that the switch actively tries to negotiate that link as LACP as opposed to PAGP. The configuration of S1 is uh, shown below. Here we can see we have to go to uh, this interface G0 slash 1 and G0 slash 2. Then we have to shut down, then create channel group 2 with the mode active. Then we have to give no shutdown command. Then we can, we have to give, we have to go to that interface port channel 2 and we have to give a switch port mode as a trunk. Okay, so we are going to um, make this uh, ports uh, G0 slash 1 and G0 slash 2 uh, from this uh, switch S1 as LACP Ether channel. We will do this configuration coming to S1. Configure a terminal. We will go to those interface as a range that is a G0 slash 1 and 2. You have to shut down these interfaces. Okay. Then we have to create a channel group 2 mode as active. Okay. Then presenter and we can see creating a port channel interface port channel 2. Now we will give no shutdown command. We will exit and then we will go to uh, the interface that is a port channel. It's a port channel 2 and we will give switch port mode as a trunk. Now the same command we have to uh, do it in uh, S2 uh, for these uh, interfaces G0 slash 1 and G0 slash 2. Coming to S2, enable configure terminal. 
we will go to those interface as a range it's a g0 slash 1 and 2 we will shut down these interfaces okay then we will create a channel group 2 mode active okay so creating a port channel interface port channel 2 now we will give a no shutdown command then we will go to uh, that interface so we can exit and then we can go to the interface uh, port channel 2 then we can give a switch port mode as a trunk now coming to step 2 verify port channel 2 status use the show commands from part 1 step 2 to verify the status of uh, port channel 2 look for the protocol used by each port okay we can do that uh, here we will go to this uh, switch s1 and we can give that show command end show the third channel summary so here we can see lacp group 2 and the ports g0 slash 1 and g0 slash 2 also we can verify show interface trunk and here we can see uh, port channel 2 status trunking native vlan 1 the same way we can verify in s2 also and show a third channel summary here we can see group 2 port channel 2 protocol lacp and we can see the ports g0 slash 1 and g0 slash 2 next we will go to part 4 configure a redundant a third channel link step 1 configure port channel 3 there are various options for the channel group number mode command so here uh, we have to go to s2 uh, then uh, to these interfaces fs0 slash 23 and 24 and channel group uh, 3 mode then they put uh, a question mark uh, active auto desirable on we can see all these modes okay so uh, on switch s2 add ports fa0 slash 23 and 0 slash 24 to port channel 3 with the channel group 3 mode passive command okay the passive option indicates that you want the switch to use lacp only if another lacp device is uh, detected so statically configure port channel 3 as a trunk interface so here we can see the command we have to give in s2 so we have to go to those interfaces then shut down it then channel group 3 mode as passive then no shutdown then we have to go to that interface port channel 3 and give a switch port mode as a trunk to the configuration in s2 configure terminal here we'll go to interface as a range that is uh, fa0 slash 23-24 we will shut down these interfaces then we will create a channel group 3 mode specified will give a passive okay so creating a port channel interface port channel 3 now we will give a no shutdown command then we will exit then we will go to the interface port channel 3 then we will give a switch port a modus a trunk on s3 add ports fa0 slash 23 and fa0 slash 24 to port channel 3 with the channel group 3 mode active command the active option indicates that you want the switch to use lacp unconditionally statically configure port channel 3 as a trunk interface okay we will do that in this switch s3 we will go to s3 
enable configure terminal you will go to those interface as a range that is fa0 slash 23-24 shut down okay then we will give channel group 3 modus active so creating a port channel interface port channel 3 okay press enter now we will give no shutdown command then we have to uh, go to exit and then go to the interface port channel 3 then give this command the switch port mode as a trunk now we will go to step 2 verify port channel 3 status use the show commands from part 1 step 2 to verify the status of port channel 3 I look for the protocol used by each port okay we can verify that uh, first of all we'll verify in s3 okay we will give end here we'll give a show uh, a third channel summary right we can use this command and here we can see the group 3 port channel 3 uh, protocol lacp and uh, ports used fa0 slash 23 and 24 also we can give the show command show interface trunk here we can see uh, port uh, port channel 3 mode on encapsulation dot 802 dot 1q status trunking native vlan 1 now creating a third channel links does not prevent spanning tree uh, from detecting a switching loops View the spanning tree status uh, of the active ports on S1. So we are going to give this command to show spanning tree active. And here they have shown the output. VLAN 1 spanning tree enabled protocol. And we can see this uh, port channel 2 uh, is in a blocked state. We will verify that in uh, S1, so just we'll go to S1 and we'll give that uh, command show spanning tree active. Enable show spanning tree active. And here we can see this uh, port channel 2 uh, is in a blocking state. Port channel 2 is not operative because uh, spanning tree protocol placed some ports into blocking mode. Unfortunately, those ports were the gigabit ports. In this uh, topology, you can restore these ports by configuring S1 to be primary route for VLAN 1. You could also set the priority to uh, 24576. So we can uh, implement either of uh, uh, any of these uh, commands in this uh, uh, switch S1. We will give this a spanning tree VLAN 1 route as primary so that this S1 will become uh, the uh, primary, I mean the root bridge. Yeah. So we will give a configure terminal. Here we can give the command a spanning tree VLAN 1 as primary. Okay. Oh. Spanning tree VLAN 1. We'll put a question mark yeah we have to give a root a root as primary yeah now we can see these ports g0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2 uh, or i mean this uh, port channel 2 is in uh, forwarding states so we can verify that just we'll exit and here we can give show spanning tree so we'll put a question mark we'll give for vlan or active okay and here we can see now port channel uh, 2 uh, it's a state forwarding and we can see uh, these uh, blocked ports uh, in uh, s3 
so just we can verify that using the show command show spanning tree we can give active and here we can see now this uh, uh, port channel uh, 3 is in a blocking state you may have to wait for stp to recalculate the tree topology press fast forward if necessary use the show spanning tree active command to verify that the gigabit ports are now in the forwarding state yes we already verified that okay in this video we configured this uh, packet tracer activity configure a third channel and now here we can see the completion status it shows 100 percent now dear friends if you have any doubt any suggestions regarding this packet tracer activity please comment below also if you like our video give a thumb and share with all your friends and also if you like to contact our team you can visit our website link you will get from the description below stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video thank you